Hello, welcome to the RSA Academy. My name is Yok. I'm the customer service manager for RSA. This is the first class. You'll learn about RSA software architecture and the network prerequisites for setting up your managed backup service. After this class, you'll be able to understand the network settings required for enabling your backup service, including what are the core components in the RSA Cloud Backup Suite or RSA CBS and how are they connected? Where should your backup server be located at? What are the networking components required? How to make the backup server accessible to the public for your own domain? First, let's talk about the core components in the RSA CPS. The whole RSA CPS is, is built on a client server architecture. Please refer to the diagram here. On the server side, we have our backup server application, the RSA CPS. It comes with a web-based centralized management console for managing the whole backup system. Users data, user data can either be hosted on your own backup server or on a, on a commercial cloud storage account, such as Microsoft Azure or Amazon S3. On the client side, we have two types of uh, backup client agents, RSA OBM and RSA ACB, for installing on, on servers, workstations that need to be backed up. They are responsible for backing up and restoring data from the client's machines to CBS or to cloud storage destinations, defined in CPS. We will talk about the cloud agents in other classes. Now, let's talk about where your backup server should be deployed at. <clears throat> Depending on your business model, the RSA CPS backup server can be located at different locations. If you are a reseller or system integrator, RSA CPS should be located in your customer site or data center. If you're offering a managed backup service to remote customers, then RSA CPS needs to be located either in your data center or on the cloud. For this class, we will assume that you're using the second model and the CBS server is running on the, on the server on, in your, on your data center. Let's move on to, this, to some networking prerequisites. So, to have a RSA CBS running on a server in your data center that can be accessed by your remote customers, uh, there are some networking components required. First, you need a fixed public IP address for the backup server. This is because the client agents will use this IP to locate the backup server from the internet. If the public IP keeps changing, uh, the client agents will not be able to find the backup server. <clears throat> Second, you need an easy way to remember the domain URL. It is necessary only if you allow your customers to log into the web console to trigger certain types of backups or to edit the settings. Some of our partners don't let their customers do so and thus not offering the web console address to them. Now, with everything ready, you need to make your backup server accessible for your domain. The following network configurations are required. First, you should allow traffic to your backup server through, through configuring your firewall and forwarding certain ports. For network communication, RSA CBS requires that you open several ports for your firewall and port forward them for your router. You need to allow network traffic to your backup server's IP address TCP port 80 for HTTP traffic, TCP port 443 for HTTPS traffic for backup and restore. This can be done by defining the NAT rules on your router. Second, your domain URL should be mapped with the fixed public IP of your backup server. An IP address is not, e is not easy for your customers to remember and is composed of numbers. Make sure your easy to remember domain URL is 
is mapped with a fixed public IP of your backup server so that your customers can, can access your backup server by just typing the URL. Now you have learned about RSA software architecture and the networking pre prerequisites for enabling your managed backup service, you can proceed to the next class, RSA CPS installation.